Bonisera. Good evening. When I stop and wonder how it come that I get to be on this stage, I cannot help but think that it has to be something or someone or a special moment that sets all of this into motion. And that is, that was a rainy, freezing cold winter evening in Gothenburg, Sweden. My arms were tired, my feet were sore, my back in knots and my hair frizzled after I finished double shifts in a restaurant where I worked. But I worked to save enough to go on my next big backpacking trip. I kept doing this. I, I would work for about six months and then and I saved enough. I would go traveling. When I run out of money, I would come back and I would do it over and over again. I loved what I did, and I loved traveling, but I knew that something had to change. And as every 20-something-year-old, I stressed as each step brought me closer to the door. You see, seven-year-old me had it all figured out. I was going to be a famous pop star that danced like nobody was watching, sang, even though I'm completely tone deaf, and ate ice cream for breakfast. Twenty-something-year-old me figured that that's probably never going to happen. But it brought me back to seven-year-old me and first time in an airplane. One day, my father would come home and tell us that they were hosting a 15 minutes free flight for people living in the area. I had never been in an airplane before, nor had my three-year-old sister, so we did a family adventure out of it. My father is not in aviation, but like many others, including myself, he loves watching airplanes as they work the magic through the skies. And I think we all have this sense of wonder coming to airplanes that how the hell, pardon my language, but how the hell can a huge, heavy, metal beast of a tube like that get airborne? And I think, I think it was this sense of wonder that made me believe that being a pilot would be an amazing job. But I was only a little girl. And young girls don't grow up to become pilots. Or so I thought. So we boarded the airplane, buckled our seatbelts, and soon after takeoff, I fell in love with flying. Seeing the world move by so peaceful below and putting perspective to everything is a feeling that I will take with me forever. Before we knew it, we were floating down the runway and without even a hint of touching the ground. I remember my father, he was looking over at us nodding in approval by how smooth and collected the landing had been. And as we taxied off the runway, this voice came over the speaker. And it's the voice that we're all very familiar with. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your uh, captain speaking. It's the kind of voice that sounds as if it has to pass through a thick moustache just to reach the microphone. <laughs> but instead, instead this calm and clear voice came over the speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. You see, it was a woman that flown us. It was a woman that landed, and it was a woman that changed my life almost 20 years later. And without even seeing her face, she's one of the most impressive women that I've ever met. That after my mother. And you see... <laughs> yes. Thank you. 
That day, two things changed. One was my father's face, realizing that it was a woman that flew on the airplane. I think he was just so surprised because even today, even today, 96% of all airline pilots are men. And back then, that number was even higher. The second thing that changed was the idea in my head that women can also be pilots. And so, here I am today, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maria Pedersen, and I'm an airline pilot. Thank you. But tonight, tonight, I'm a humble young woman that gets to share my view with you and people all over the world since I fly through the skies at 38,000 feet. When I told my parents that I wanted to become a pilot, they never told me that I couldn't. They said it would be hard work, but encouraged me that anything that I set my mind to, I can do. So I did what every pilot has to do. I started out flying small single engine airplanes, and after a two-year period, I was a fully qualified commercial pilot. In 2014, I got my first job as an airline pilot flying the Boeing 737 with almost 200 passengers on board across Europe. And in that first year of flying, I would send pictures to family and friends back home sharing the new adventures that I worked so hard for. And by chance, I signed up for this new site called Instagram, and I started posting my pictures on there. This is the first aviation-related picture that I posted. That is back in 2015. And I think it's with this picture where me first became we. Or when I started to share my passion for aviation with all of you. Today, um, or over the first year, actually, of posting my picture, I had passed 100,000 following mark. Today, I share my adventures with over half a million people through my social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and on my own blog, all under the same name, Pilot Maria. And from the very beginning of posting my pictures, I would get direct messages telling me how lucky I was and how fortunate I was to make it in a male-dominated environment. I didn't really understand these messages. Why am I lucky? I just fly the airplane. There is nothing in flying an airplane that makes it more difficult to do so just because you're a woman. And there's nothing in flying an airplane that benefits just because you're a man. We all have to write the same tests and take the same exams, and the standards are the same, no matter gender. I've heard stories, stories where passengers wouldn't board an airplane because the pilot in command of that flight was a woman. Or stories where a female pilot tried to check in on the frequency and after she tried three times without getting a reply, her male colleague would try, and he would get an answer immediately. There might be a simple explanation that maybe her radio stopped working. You can just ask anyone, and they will for sure have a story to share. I, however, I have never felt discriminated. I spent my first three years of flying in Italy, and I lived in Palermo, Sicily. 
After landing, passengers would stick their head into flight deck and they would say something in Italian that I didn't really understand what it meant. But complimente. Complimente is a word that I was often told and I learned that it means something like my compliments for your success. And hearing this made me feel so happy and proud. And maybe, maybe I've just been blind for negative comments or judgmental eyes, but it doesn't really matter. I don't think it's not about not believing that a woman can't fly the airplane. I think it's just about tradition. And the more common it becomes, the more acceptable it becomes. So social media is a great tool to reach out to others. What we do as an online community when we share our lives is that we get to show opportunities that others did not think were possible. And I'm not alone in doing this. I'm not alone in sharing my life as a pilot on Instagram. We're a whole community. And together, we can inspire others. We get to show opportunities they did not know were possible. Why though? Why is there still only 4% of female pilots in the airline world today? So when I get messages, when I get messages telling me that in my country I cannot become a pilot because I'm a woman, or questions, can I really become a pilot even though I'm a woman? Before getting all these messages, I didn't know just how lucky I actually was. Having family and friends supporting me, not everybody have that luck. So that is the message that I want you all to take with you today, that hard work always pays off. But more importantly, gender is never a limit. <laughs>